So you can see a lot of commonality in the culture. You can see a lot of commonality even in the language. Remember, I'm learning the Metonetra now to the extent that I've begun teaching the Metonetra That's now. That's right. You're doing a great job level. too, brother. Thank you very much. So you certainly can see uh, the development of how the Metonetra coins uh, various um, words and how Hebrew coins various words. You can see the connection in terms of if I was to give you looking at a word such as I. In Hebraic thought, there are two main ways that we can say I. I say Ani, or I say Anoki. Ani has the same exact letters in Hebrew as the word Ayin, which means nothingness. So what do we learn from that? The thought implicit within the term Ani, which means I, it also contains Ayin, which means nothing. Because the real I, the real me, is the nothingness within me, the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the highest you. Then we have the word Anoki. That's the reveal aspect of someone's greatness. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways we can look at this Hebraic term Anoki. We, Anoki and Ani. Anoki means I, and it's talking about the reveal aspect of greatness. Ani also means I, but it's referring mostly to the innermost aspect of greatness. But watch this. How do you say I in the Medinetia? Anuk. Mm. It's the same exact word. Powerful. Anuk. Now, let me ask you, um, yeah. if it's one thing that I can say about you and your mm -hmm. character is that you have always been honest. You have always spoke the truth. You have said things that other people wouldn't say, regardless of whether, um, you know, people they, mess with me or not. Right, right. Yeah. People will mess with you or people will bang on you or not. You have always spoke truth to, to what you believe in. Mm -hmm. Is there, since you've been studying the Metunetta, have you learned something that you was... So, thank you very much. So let's, let's be clear on something. Go ahead, brother. Yes, I could definitely say that. I can say that with, um, with, with great honesty that I've learned things um, since coming into the community that I know was taught by many people that mm -hmm. taught me. I know I carried on my lips, but coming into the community, I updated my information. Yes. And um, any real scholar has to do that or else you're just playing games, right? So to get to it, one of the things that I learned primarily that I was incorrect on is the fallacious idea and statement that we built pyramids. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, wow. To, to say you built pyramids as Israelites or Hebrews in ancient Egypt really shows your ignorance. Brother, of you are showing so chronology. much growth before you even finish. <laughs> I want to just shout. That's why, that's why I say this brother is one of my best top Hebrew Israelites that's out there, man, because he keeps it real. He te Go ahead, brother. I don't even well, want to You got to be honest, right? You got to have integrity. So to be honest and to show integrity, let's be clear. Hebrews did not build pyramids in ancient Kemet. To say that Hebrews built pyramids in ancient Kemet would actually render the narrative that we carry that we were in Egypt, it would break it from its foundation. Mm. It would rip it from its very foundation simultaneously. The moment we say that we built the pyramids, we are ripping any foundation that we attach to our presence in Egypt. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So Hebrews can only be placed in Egypt during two major periods. Both periods attest to Asiatics, the Middle Kingdom period mm -hmm. and the New Kingdom period. The new ki Middle Kingdom period um, beginning mainly with Menchu Hotep II. Uh, Menchu is satisfied is what his name means in the Medinetia. The New Kingdom period mainly beginning with Amos the first, mm -hmm. right? So here is where the Israelite narrative of building pyramids will crack if we simultaneously believe that we were in Egypt. All of the pyramid building is primarily in the Old Kingdom. The first pyramid ever constructed in ancient Kemet is in Saqqara. This is knowledge right now. Yeah, hey, you you don't see in. no books open right That's now. That's right. You deal the with first pyramid the dome. ever built in ancient Kemet is in Saqqara, and that's the step pyramid. Mm -hmm. And the architect Imhotep. is Imhotep. Mm -hmm. Correct. We're talking about 27th century BCE, which is the 2600s. Now, there is no Asiatic presence in ancient Kemet 
testified at all during that period. Mm. At all. Even the Hebrew narrative of being slaves in Egypt doesn't agree with that timeline. Pyramid building in ancient Kemet is in the Old Kingdom. But guess who else said that to add yes. on to? Yes. A great grandmaster teacher, may peace and blessings be upon mm -hmm. him, Dr. Ben. Uh -huh. So what you are saying is the same thing that Dr. Ben was saying. Absolutely. Dr. Go ben, ahead, brother. Dr. Ben was absolutely right. When he said that Hebrews never built pyramids. He said that the pyramids yeah. was already in his ruined stages. Pyramids were already um, in their ruined estate. When the absolutely, Hebrews absolutely. came absolutely. in. When the Hebrews came in. Yes, go but ahead, brother. One of the things I appreciate about Dr. Ben is he never denied that Hebrews came in. That's right. And I, and I appreciate that about him and Dr. John Henry Clark, as well as Baba Heru. They don't deny the presence of Hebrews in Egypt, mm -hmm. which is also a debate right yes. now. But I want to stop you. Go back to what you yeah. were teaching. So to be here. very, very clear, to say that Hebrews built pyramids in ancient Kemet is to rip the foundation of the Hebraic narrative that we are also simultaneously slaves in Egypt. Because the period of Correct. Uh, Hebrew enslavement in Egypt doesn't agree with the period of slave building. There's no Hebrew alive that will tell you that Joseph, um, Moses, and the Israelites were in Egypt during the Old Kingdom period. Every Israelite harps on two periods, the Middle Kingdom period and the New Kingdom period, because that's the one that has the most evidence for showing Asiatics. It is only during the Middle Kingdom period and the New Kingdom period where not just there's a presence of Asiatics, but you can see Asiatics uh, as, as captives there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Ramses has a stella that comes hotly contested in the community, but it still exists. It's called the 400 year stella. In the era, Ramses the Great, which is Ramses the Second, he celebrates what's called 400 years, 400 years of the Amu being in, in um, ancient Kemet. It's known as the 400 year stella of Ramses. 